Uh, let's check it out. And with Great Wolf's howl, you can ignore the cooldowns of your war cries. Let all that anger out. Ah! Ah! Someone popped the Alan and Steve sounds. We have them on the stream. We got Alan and Steve. Where is it? I have it here somewhere. Alan, Steve! Alan, Steve! There you go. It's him. Alan, Alan. It's him, boys. Steve! Let it rip, boys. Let's let it rip. It's him. Nine days to go until we all log in, and it's time for another PoE2 passive tree video. If you didn't know, I went to a PoE2 event a few weeks back and was able to capture some of the passive skill tree, and I've been covering each section of the tree, discussing some of the more interesting nodes. Today, it's the intelligence area of the tree, where the witch and sorceress start. Alright, let's begin with one of the reoccurring themes in this area of the tree, which is modifiers to scale energy shield recharge. In yesterday's video, I talked about how the PoE2 passive tree has much fewer options available for energy shield recovery, which is true, as there was no Ghost Reaver keystone in the version of the game that I played, and I also couldn't find any nodes for energy shield leech. However, access to scaling energy shield recharge has been largely increased, and no matter where you are in the intelligence section of the tree, you won't have to path very far to allocate some of these nodes. Keep in mind that Energy Shield Recharge has a 4 second base delay before it begins in PoE2. But nodes like Convalescence will help with that, reducing recharge rate but allowing it to start much faster as a trade off. Essence Infusion, on the other hand, provides a huge increase to recharge rate, improving the time you require to recover your ES back to full. Meanwhile, Dependable Ward and Rapid Recharge both have the same modifiers, and these are just solid boosts to Energy Shield Recharge providing both of the stats you need to I'm start really recharging notes. faster and recover more ES over time from this mechanic. <clears throat> There's also Refocus, which is going to be useful if you have high cast or attack speed to be able to proc the start of Energy Shield Recharge faster than it would have started naturally, especially considering the longer base delay compared to PoE1. However, it's important to mention that there is no Wicked Ward Keystone on the tree in the version that I played, so mm. you won't have that option to be able to prevent damage from stopping your recharge. Okay, let's stick with Energy Shield for a moment and cover some of the nodes which will so help cool. you against any incoming stuns on builds that are more focused on ES than life. Stun Threshold is based on maximum life by default, so these types of builds typically need to find a way to become immune to stuns or have their stun threshold based on their ES instead of life in PoE 1. But in PoE2, there's a lot more options available to solve this problem. For example, Dampening Shield, which grants a good chunk of increased maximum energy shield, and adds 12% of your maximum ES to Stun Threshold. That's so massive. if you have 5,000 energy shield, this modifier would add a flat 600 to your Stun Threshold. Oh. Hallowed provides more of this stat at 20% of maximum ES gained as additional Stun Threshold, but also helps you shake off a stun a bit faster as well. Then we have a few of the stronger nodes. Eldritch Will is one of- What do you mean a few of the stronger nodes? You mean like absolutely giga chat broken ones? What the fuck? Only three or four nodes on the entire passive tree with increased maximum life. You get 3% each to life mana. So they've actually said that there weren't going to be any specific life nodes on the tree, but apparently there are some. That's massive. And energy shield, and once again, another 20% of max ES as added stun threshold. And self mortification, which also grants 20% of max ES as added stun threshold, but also increases that stun threshold by 20% while you're on full life. Hmm. This one is exceptionally good for an energy shield based CI build where you're always on full life to be able to fully benefit from that increased stun threshold. Alright, let's look at a few minion nodes on the left outer edge yes! of the tree. This cluster here, firstly, right hand. Shout out to Dreamcore for this video, by the way. Right hand of darkness. Increase area effect and inflict withered on hit for all your minions. And of darkness, which grants 20% wow. increased AoE to your minions and gives them wow. a 10% chance to inflict withered on hit. 
this is going to be really good to combo with some of those chaos star abilities when you have minions that attack quickly or just when you have a lot of minions to hit enemies meanwhile on the opposite side of this cluster is a more defensive minion node in okay. left hand of darkness which why the fuck is left hand on the right side and right hand on the left side why just, just why He's looking at you. Is it shaped as a dude, though? And he's facing us. Is it mirrored? But this is a skill tree. It's not a character, but it's just shaped as an individual. Which grants 20% additional PDR and 23% chaos res to your minions. But in the middle of this cluster is possibly the most important. You call this a dude? What the fuck? Lord of the Horrors. 12% reduced reservation? Man. That's actually fucking insane. A specter? Okay. That's crazy. On the entire tree. Lord of Horrors, which Wait, what did he say? Minion node on the entire cluster is possibly the most important minion node on yeah. the entire tree. Yeah. Lord of Horrors, which makes... Which means... That we're gonna have a similar situation to that what we have in PUE one, where the majority of minion builds will want to go to a specific cluster on the tree to pick up very specific minion nodes because of how strong those minion nodes are. This one will very likely be one of those situations where you have to go to this node if you play in minions. Makes minion skills have twelve percent reduced reservation, so you can either use more of them or, or invest into, less guess, into yeah. spirit or use any excess spirit you do have to reserve other power. The reason we don't have that possibility in PUE1 is because the other nodes are also very strong. Because the entire cluster is good. But the entire cluster here is good as well. That's what I'm trying to talk about, yeah. Buffs. Okay, let's take a quick look at this node here, Breath of Fire. There's also an equal node for each of the other elements here on this wheel, and each of the small nodes also grants 6% pen for their respective element. In general, penetration is much more accessible across the entire passive tree and is found in larger quantities, but there's a big reason for that. Because in PoE2, penetration will no longer go into the negatives. This means that penetration has no effect against monsters that have no resistance to the type of damage you're dealing. Instead, it will be a tool to deal with monsters that do have resistance, such as bosses, but no longer a mechanic that is used as an excessive damage multiplier. But that's not for minions. Let's go back to Energy Shield for a moment and take a look at some no, of the no, largest no. Dream increases Core. Dream to Core. maximum. Bruh, yeah. come back to minions. Okay. Oh, they're a timestamp. My bad. Are there more? Necromantic Talisman? Oh, let's not spoil ourselves. S on the tree. Starting with Heavy Buffer. 40% increased max ES, and 10% reduced maximum life. It's interesting to see a lot of the stronger nodes having trade-offs like this, almost like a keystone. There's also melding, which is the same, but with reduced mana instead of reduced life. Then there's enhanced barrier, which doesn't provide nearly as much increased maximum energy shield, fuck, but man? does grant 1% of all maximum elemental resistances, so that's a solid notable. And check out this one. Patient Barrier, 60% increased maximum energy shield. That is wild. If you can overcome that Fuck. downside, this one is going to be insane value. Necrom Monks can use that where they don't do any recharge at all. That's one node gives 60% maximum energy shield. What the fuck? That is actually wild. That's insane. Like beyond insane. Romantic Talisman is a keystone located near the outer edge, which what? makes bonuses from your equipped amulet be applied to your minions instead of you. What? So the, the PUE 1 version is Necromantic Aegis that makes the minions get your shield instead of you. Now they're doing it with the amulet. Bro! Me and Bother are going to have an argument whether or not this is worth using or not, like we had with the Necromantic Aegis. Oh, I got a screenshot shot this and send it to him. Holy fuck. Let's see. Balor Mage. Ready to uh, return to the fight of the century again. Round two. Fight. <laughs> that is so cool. 
This is going to be ridiculous if that also includes any anoint that's on there. But otherwise, we're not too sure yet what sorts of modifiers would exist on amulets, so we'll have to wait and see for that. Another keystone at the outer edge of the tree is Whispers of Doom, which grants an extra curse at the cost of double the delay for curses to activate. This one will be a great keystone if you apply curses in ways that bypass the activation time, such as Blasphemy. Mm -hmm. Climate Change is Heat Shiver on the PoE2 passive tree, that one's pretty cool. And yeah. Ice Walls is interesting. Ice Crystals are a secondary mechanic similar to something like Jagged Ground or Aftershocks where you can scale their effects to make those skills which interact with them more powerful. That's pretty There's cool. There's another notable next to this one which tree. also reduces the life of Ice Crystals instead if you want to go that route. Endless Blizzard is at the top of the tree, right at the outer edge, plus one to the level of all cold skills. That's going to be extremely valuable for a lot of Sorg builds. Considering that they're giving plus level of skills, as a tier four skill gem and how valuable that is for casters and minion builds, that is insane. Kind of odd that he hasn't mentioned it yet. I'm not sure we're going to see that for the other skills though, because those becomes very mandatory. Notes and there's to pick also up as well. psychic fragmentation, which grants a 24% chance for spells to fire two additional projectiles. That's really good, especially mm -hmm. for something like fireball where the damage may overlap on explosions. Okay, we've saved the best till last, of course, and it's a bunch of stat stacking stuff again. Pure Power is right at the top of the tree and grants 2% increased lightning damage per 10 intelligence. Now, the fact that this is lightning damage is crazy considering we know that intelligence is going to grant a lot more mana in PoE 2. It grants mm -hmm. 2 mana per int, and yesterday we saw the Archmage Persistent True. buff shown True. off in the PoE 2 teaser, which combines incredibly well with this node. But if you want more reason to stack intelligence and mana, look no further than Arcane Intensity, which grants 3% increased spell damage per 100 maximum mana with no cap. That's going to be kind of ridiculous how much increased damage you can get by combining these two notables on an intelligence stacker. That's and so what cool. about modifiers? 5,555. Thank you, guys. Mel, get ready for some exclusive Sebastian content, but no pressure or anything. To scale maximum mana. Well, aside from the 3% max mana on the Eldritch Will node from earlier, I could only find two notables in the intelligence section of the tree. Mana Blessing near the Witch and Sork Star, and Raw Mana closer to the outer edge of the tree. I know that mm -hmm. there's also a few notables in the Int Strength portion of the tree, so while mana didn't quite get the life treatment, it did get extremely limited compared to PoE 1. Yep. But there is one crazy keystone that we need to talk about at the end here, which doesn't really have anything to do Mind with it, but mana, yes. Eldritch Battery is changed mm. in PoE 2, no. and it now converts... Okay, so this one was confirmed by devs to be an old version, so they're saying that this is not what's going to be in the game. They're saying that the other version, which is similar to PoE 1, because this is a, a very old version of Eldritch Battery, so that's what devs have confirmed. All of your so energy is no longer into the case. mana. And that's this the end of the video. We don't know if they're going to change it back to this, but the devs did confirm that that was not the case, though. So the old Eldritch battery is still going to be there. Uh, again, give a subscribe, like the video, and uh, leave a comment. Um, minion nodes looking hella sweet. Uh, leave a comment that helps the algorithm for him. I'll leave a link here in the description down below the video. And uh, here's it. Uh, here it is in Twitch chat, and here it is in the YouTube chat. Uh, really, really cool. I like the idea of this, but the minion nodes, woo, this last one, my only concern when they have nodes like this is that it puts a lot of pressure on going there. So if you play minions, you're going to want to be in the side of the tree, which lo uh, limits or lowers diversity by default. Now you can oil this or anoint it with that mechanic. Uh, so we'll see how that's going to go. But it also seemed like these other nodes were extremely potent, which means you can't just oil this one. They, you need to have these type of bad damage modifiers or defense modifiers uh, compensated elsewhere for you to not go to this area. That is my only argument on this. But again, big shout out to Mr. Dream Course YouTube channel here for the uh, int section. He has plenty of content. Do check his channel out. And I'm going to tell you to hit the like button, subscribe for more content on this channel as well, and leave a comment down below. Uh, what you think of the in section of the tree. The ES nodes looks insane. Until next time, as always, stay safe and keep rocking.